The father-in-law, Prince Charles, presented Kate with a set of Art Deco white and yellow diamond jewelry as a wedding gift, comprising a bracelet, a pair of earrings, and a ring. She has worn them many times, together and separately, and they have become a favorite for most of her black tie events and for state occasions on overseas tours. When the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge commenced the final leg of their royal tour down under in the nation's capital of Canberra, their first on their itinerary was a visit to the National Arboretum perched high on the hills overlooking Lake Burley Griffin. The Arboretum was recently opened in the wake of the bushfires that ravaged the area over a decade ago. The royal couple planted an English oak tree to make a contribution to the efforts of the Arboretum. The Duchess wore a vivid grass-green coat dress by Catherine Walker. This is a bespoke piece that fuses design elements of the Catherine Walker Evelyn coat dress and the Laura coat from the current collection. Both are fabricated from Venetian wool and it's evident that Kate combined the zip scuba collar of the Lara with the full skirt of the Evelyn, including the hand-picked stitching and belt. We got a glimpse of the Susanna Green budding heart silk tea dress under her coat. Kate also wore this dress under her green erdem coat when she visited the Waikato region of New Zealand. On her feet were the infamous L.K. Bennett sledge top patent pumps. Kate wore her emerald and diamond earrings and Cartier balloon blue watch. Kate looked elegant in a monochromatic outfit with her hair in a loose chignon. She wore an ivory fitted peplum dress from American designer Lella Rose. This is the first occasion we have seen the Duchess wear this label. The linen blend sheath dress is from the spring 2012 collection. It features lace short sleeves and peplum waist. It originally retailed for $1,295. Knowing I am a fan of the brand, it may come as a surprise that I wasn't crazy about the dress. It's more than likely that it's lovely in person, but unfortunately, in some photographs, it almost appears the Duchess has spider webs on her arms. The size of the actual lace circles is so big, the lace statement is so dramatic, it overpowers the rest of the garment. It was one of the few occasions where I felt the dress was wearing Kate, not the other way around. The Duchess wore the diamond bracelet and earrings she often chooses for formal situations. She also had her Cartier wristwatch from the jeweler's Balloon de Blue collection. Kate contrasted the dress with her black suede mulberry base water clutch and Jimmy Choo cosmic platform pumps. The Duchess completed the ensemble with her dazzling diamond earrings and bracelet set, which she tends to favor for formal events. She also wore her Cartier ball and blue watch. The Duchess of Cambridge is known for her long, glossy hair, which always looks healthy and styled to perfection. And while a bouncy blow-dry has become Kate's signature do, she doesn't shy away from trying new styles, from perfectly preened chignons to braided updos, all of which are suitable for brides. Having said that, for this time, you can't go wrong with a classic chignon for timeless, elegant style. I know a number of audiences who would be happy to see a tight shot of her ultra-chic updo. Willem made a short speech and told the audience of 600 how much he and his family had enjoyed their visit to Australia. He also made a comical remark about Prince George's affection for his plush toy wombat. Immediately following the reception, Willem and Kate headed to the National Portrait Gallery where they viewed some of its prized paintings, including one of Australian native Princess Mary of Denmark. On their final evening of the royal tour, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge attended a cocktail reception at the Government House, hosted by the Governor General, Sir Peter Cosgrove. The royal couple mingled with 100 carefully selected guests from the arts, sports, business, and charity.